Hey guys, welcome to episode, I don't know, episode whatever of the 1974 TR6 restoration on the Rusty Beauties channel. So, so as we're putting together the frame for the 74 TR6, uh, you know what we've done already, we assembled the front suspension, in the last video assembled the rear suspension, the diff and the axles. So in this video, I think we're gonna go back to the front back to the front sounds like back to the future so we're gonna go back to the front and we're gonna install the radiator protection plate the sway bar and the steering rack the steering rack of course needs to be taken care of first we need to change it's sitting over there we need to change the boots and uh, the tie rod ends and we're gonna install it here so uh, let me get ready with the hardware here and then we're gonna start All right, so we have the radiator protection plate, the sway bar, the U-bolts for the sway bar, bushings for the sway bar, the brackets, mounting brackets for the sway bar and the hardware. We have new links and we have somewhere we have hardware to mount the plate on the frame. So let's get on it. All right, so here we have more holes than what we need. So let's see which one, which ones are the, our holes, I guess, these ones. Okay. So here, I know for a fact, I watched my, my own video from the, when I was assembling the 1973 TR6. This boat and this boat are the boats that hold the um, bumper mount bracket. So this one is not used for anything else, but this one has double use. So this one, I'm just gonna put the bolt in this direction so it's out of the way. And this one, I'm gonna put the bolt this way. So when this bracket comes, I don't need to remove the whole bolt. I'm just gonna remove the nut. I'm gonna put the bracket and I'm gonna put back the bolt. The other bolt here, we're going to put on when we are installing the bracket. So that's how it goes. We're going to do the same on the other side. Now this nut is going to have to come off anyways. That's why I'm using an old one. So we're going to put a new one when we install the bracket so now let's put our bushings on the sway bar probably a little bit of grease inside is gonna help oh, I hate greasy things These shells come like this. I hope you can see, guys. I don't think the bar itself has orientation, so it should go both ways. And then it goes underneath, and there are holes on the radiator protection plate that hold it. For now, we're gonna leave them loose so we can shift the bar left and right easily so we can match wherever it needs to be here. And then the link needs to come. I asked KJ to paint this black. So it's a little bit dirty. All right, so again, one color rubber 
and then another collar and there must be a sleeve through all of that like this then the bar <clears throat> the other collar okay and the rubber another collar and there's barely room for the nut okay it went in all right so the other link is installed as well and now first we're gonna tighten these bolts here and here then the bottom of the link that is gonna adjust the position of the sway bar left and right more or less and then we're gonna tighten these bolts here in, on the brackets in the middle So the sway bar is installed, it's tight on this side, these brackets are tight and, and this side as well. It looks a little bit on an angle here, but I guess that's how it is, because the other side is the same. So that's it for the sway bar. Let's take care of the steering rack now. All right, so here's our steering rack and we have new boots that we can install. These came from Chef Tash and they come with the proper clamps here for the gaiters, they call them, as they call them, and not just zip ties. So as we're changing the gaiters, we should inspect also the parts inside the bowls and the pinion and everything. And we're changing also the tie rod ends. We have new ones. KJ painted them for me. I'm gonna count the number of threads that I'm removing so we can put the new ones there. Hopefully these were aligned well. So the new ones are gonna go in the exact same position. And we will see if it will need some adjustment later or not. My KJ painted everything, but we're gonna ruin his paint. I guess we're gonna have to touch it up later again. But we have no other choice. There, the tie rod end is moving together with this nut. So we're gonna have to lock them. Oh. We loosen the nut a little bit and now our tie rod then moves. So this is the driver's side and we're gonna count the turns here. You gotta remember them for me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen turns. So we're gonna record that eighteen turns for the driver's side, right? Let's remove this nut as well. Now I can remove the gator. Let's do the same to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this one has one more. The passenger side has one more turn than the driver side, which is good. They are pretty close. Sometimes you have like 10 turns on one side and 25 turns or 30 turns on the other side. In this case, I try to equalize them. I just make sure that at the end, the total amount of turns is the same. I just add a little bit to one and remove the same amount from the, from the other. But in this case, we don't need to do anything. We're gonna do 18 and 19. This 
this side it's a little bit trickier because this gator is a little bit smaller here on this side because it goes over a smaller diameter here on this side it goes over a bigger diameter so this opening is bigger and it goes through this assembly here but but here the opening is smaller and it's hard to go over this assembly especially when you mount it now we can just pull it and tear it if we have to okay. so for proper inspection of course you have to take this apart and inspect it properly we're not gonna go that deep there's no play so we are good okay here I'm not gonna take apart this uh, completely I'm, I'm just gonna take out the nut and clean it because I don't want it black but here there are springs and stuff so we have to be careful okay and these shims here are important so we have one two three shims so these are important to go back because they determine the amount of play here you see this play it is controlled by the amount of shims we put there so this is the plunger inside we're not going to take that out so if you want to take this apart you have to remove the circlip from here and then the whole pinion comes out with there's there's a bushing here in the back and everything but for now we're not gonna do anything we are okay here okay i cleaned the nuts and i painted them and while they dry we're gonna see what we can do about the gators here that's interesting we have three clumps not sure why okay this is the big one that comes here okay so we need to grease this of course that's the worst part that i don't like but this clump is not gonna fit here anyways Way. So unfortunately we're gonna have to use a zip tie here, that's the only way. Okay, so this part is really tricky. Sometimes I'm able to... Oh, it's a mess. Sometimes I'm able to put this big one with no problems, but looks like this time it doesn't work. So what I do in this case is I take a pop can like this. I wash it nicely inside, of course. So I don't want it to be sticky. I have no affiliation with this company, you know. <laughs> then I put it over like this. Ah, okay. And I try to make something like a funnel. Like this. Oh. 
Okay. So now we ha have to remove the tin carefully with pliers without ripping it and without pulling the gator back out. I said without ripping it. This gator is that it is super soft and I can't push on it because it bends. Oh. trick I don't know if you saw it you want to do it again <laughs> let's do it again if it doesn't work it's your fault Ridiculous guys. So let's zip tie it before it comes loose again. After struggling for half an hour, I was able to do it twice in 30 seconds. It's crazy. That's tight enough, shouldn't be able to come out. Well, probably you guys are laughing at me and right now, probably there's some trick that I don't know. I thought I had one trick up my sleeve with this thing, but it's always worked so far. But it's always the first time when it doesn't. Okay. So unfortunately we have to go here with zip ties again. I don't know why these were in when they don't work. Probably one, one is gonna work there and that's all. So let's say this side is done. Let's do the other. All right, guys, I'm not gonna bother you with uh, the second one because it was even worse than the first one. None of my tricks worked. So there's really nothing to show you there. You're not gonna learn anything new. You're gonna only hear me swearing. Like I said, the problem with these boots was that they were too soft and I couldn't really push on them. The only way to move them around is to pull on them, not pushing. Where I had other boots before, I was able to push on them and they were going uphill on the funnel that I was making for them. So I'm just gonna tell you, I've done it. I don't even know how, but I've done it. And this is the final result. So let's finish this finally <laughs> now this is the passenger side here we had 19 turns on our tie rod end so let's count them okay it already started so one two three and nineteen so that's where we're gonna tighten it. You know what? I'm gonna tighten these nuts once I put it on the steering link because that's gonna hold it for me and I'm gonna be able to tighten this better. So 
I'm not gonna tighten it now because I don't wanna scratch the paint. There you go. So these nuts here, I'm gonna install, install when we are on the car because I just realized that I primed them and I never painted them. So it's gonna take a while. So let's go and put this on the car in the meantime. Okay, so now here we have those bushings that have this lip and the lip is designed so it fits under this. You see, there's a flat part on this plate and the bushing is designed so it goes right, un oops, right under it, like this, you see? The other one on the other side as well, which is the opposite. and slides right under this. Okay. That also determines the the right angle and of the pinion shaft, the correct angle. I shouldn't say right angle because that means something else. And now this bracket goes over the bushing The other side and that kind of positions your steering rack it can move left or right because these plates are limited by the bushings and by our other brackets that go on top and then we put this little plate underneath with the lip to the center and then when we put the nuts, it still has, I don't know if you see, it has a little bit of a play here. So we have to push it against here while tightening the nuts. So it prevents it from moving completely. And now there are these holes underneath here on the frame that allow you to reach from underneath with the socket and tighten, and tighten these nuts. So now we can connect our tie rod ends. Everything is nice and tight. Like I can't even. can tighten this nut and now we know that it's not going anywhere okay and now we need some touch-ups here on the paint because we scratched it but let's do the other side as well now we can put this back together with some grease inside. <coughs> now, when I was clean, when I was cleaning the cup, I found out that there were three more shims. So we have six all together, but as many as they are, just put them back. <coughs> Let's not scratch this paint as well. because that was the main reason why I removed it, right? <laughs> to paint it. Okay, that's so much better than black, isn't it? Okay, and that completes the steering rack. All right, so now we have the entire front suspension assembled and everything is installed in place everything is torqued so other than oh, 
making an alignment later and seeing if we need shims here. Other than that, the front suspension, I believe, is complete. Rear suspension as well. Everything is installed, everything is torqued. Only thing that we need still to do is to replace this boot and add a boot there. And after that, we can put back the axles and torque these bolts to, I think it's 14 foot pounds. I'm not really sure. We will see. But suspension wise, we are complete. Wow, that's good. So I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but I'm gonna end it here because that's suspension. So we can start a brand new video in which I guess we're gonna start working on the brakes. We will see, that's uh, the subject of the next video. So let's not jump ahead of us. So that's it guys, short video, long video. I have no idea. But anyways, we can end it here. Thanks for watching. Bye.